So far, we were uh, talking about perfectly mixed reactors. Uh, however, uh, we have to also deduce the mixing quality. And we are going to identify two different mixing forms. One is micromixing, one is macromixing. Micromixing is uh, the mixing that we establish within the fluid element. And here we have ping pong balls representing fluid elements. They are entering with the incoming fluid, leaving the reactor with the outgoing fluid. And these fluid elements, they are perfectly micromixed. Mixing within the fluid element is perfect. But those fluid elements don't mix with one another. In other words, they behave like ping pong balls filled with the reactive fluid. In other words, they are acting like batch reactors. And here, in this macroscopic domain, we also have an impeller mixing those small fluid elements, for example, to ensure the thermal uniformity within the reactor. So perfectly micromixed fluid elements behave like small batch reactors. And we have a perfect CSTR here with a washout function of Ci over Ci0 to be equal to e to the minus t over tau or f of t. f of t was the density function, which is equal to minus dw over dt. And that is equal to 1 over tau e to the minus t over tau. Now, I will take this density function. Okay. This is each of them are acting like a batch reactor. So I will have the batch reactor analysis for the contents. so that I have C of T, let me say CA of T, concentration of A as a function of time. And this F of T is going to give me the distribution where at the average time that each of these fluid elements can spend within the reactor. So if I take this concentration and convolute it, with the distribution function of these fluid elements, that is going to give me the average concentration within this reactor. F of t times Ca of t dt for all times. So this is one approach. This is one approach of treating non-idealities. That we have perfectly micromixing and perfect macromixing, but still our fluid elements do not interact with one another. Non-idealities are in terms of the ping pong balls that enter into this reactor. There might be situations where we have imperfections in micromixing, imperfections in macromixing. How else can we treat these problems? Now, we have to make sure that we understand our reactor well enough to come up with alternative solutions. For example, let me enlarge a domain 
of this particular reactor, the inlet domain of this particular reactor. Let's magnify that I have one fluid element coming in. I will call this one zero. Enters into the first domain of my reactor, which is located next to the second domain of my reactor. Then I have nth domain of my reactor. Then I have n plus 1th domain of my reactor. And each of these domains may have exchanges of fluid with one another. And writing a balance for domain 1, I have at steady state F0 coming in. I use smaller Fs just to indicate that these are subdomains plus F from N to 1 coming in plus f from 2 to 1 coming in minus f 1 to 2 leaving minus f 1 to n leaving to be equal to 0 plus of course r times let me call RA times V1, volume of the first domain. So this is the generalized CSTR equation for domain 1. And I have to write it for all the domains that I have identified within this reactor. And this is called the zone model. And if I have too many zones, of course, analytical treatment becomes impossible. And I have to use tools that are uh, available to me, computational tools that are available to me. Now let us consider a plug flow reactor this time. If we mix our reactants early in the reactor, this is stream A. Let us inject stream B at the inlet. This will be an early mixed fluid package which is going to traverse through the reactor without being mixed with the fluid element neither before nor after it. And I will leave the reactor as a perfect plug flow reactor configuration. But what if we introduce B in small segments, little by little? What happens? We have to write our balance equations. We have to know the volumetric flow rate of each of these streams. And we have to write our balance equations segment by segment. All right. So this plug flow reactor operation 
is very similar in certain cases, identical to the operation of a semi-batch reactor, where we have one of the fluids in a batch and the other one is added continuously. We have the A fluid package moving along this reactor and each time it receives a little bit of B. Each time as the conversion, as A, all the reactants are converted, a little bit of B added. As time progresses, a little bit of B added. Right? So those two operations, if this is a perfectly mixed semi-batch reactor and if it is a perfectly plug flow reactor, this, they are identical. Okay? So this is one type of operation where we model non-idealities or we take care of the non-idealities by dividing reactors into compartments that we can tackle mathematically. On the other hand, we have another kind of reactor, a plug flow reactor. a plug flow reactor where we feed A's and B's whatever our reactants are and we gradually remove products So, here this product was removed after a short period of time. This product was removed after a little bit conversion has taken place and so on and so forth. All right. This operation is equivalent to a semi-batch operation. where we have A's and B's continuously fed, but then we gradually, sorry, A's and B's are fed initially and where we gradually remove the product. Under the plug flow reactor, perfect ideal plug flow reactor condition. This is equivalent to an ideal, perfectly stirred semi-batch reactor operation. So in summary, we discussed the features of a maximum mixedness reactor a segregated flow reactor and two different types of semi-batch reactors. Mathematical analysis is going to be unique for each react reaction and uh, for the particulars of the reactor volume versus the flow rates that we arrange.